and welcome to another Raw Umbra video. I'm Lisa Dingemans and this is going to be a short video tutorial on what sort of materials I use for drawing. So the first thing you're going to need is, and this is what you'll need, whatever sort of drawing material you use, is a rubber. So you've got hard rubbers and putty rubber. So those are the main two different types. Another thing you're often going to need is tape. Not just any tape, but painter's tape. So painter's tape is designed to stick, of course, because that's what you want tape to do, but also to be removed really easily so it doesn't rip up your paper. So with my two rubber types, I first want to start by talking about hard ones. So as you can see, I've made a wedge into it and you do this with a knife. The sharp end of the wedge is for short marks and the blunt end is for big marks. That way it gives you a lot of versatility. The next rubber I'm going to show you is the putty rubber, and that's the rubber I use the most myself. It's nice and moldable, as you can see. You can sort of stretch it, and I like to roll it with my fingers into different shapes. For instance, a pointy shape, or I squeeze it into a flat wedge. And what's good about this is that you can use the sharp end of the wedge to make really clean little lines. And... I like to use the thick end to erase bigger, bigger amounts. All right, so first of all, I wanna talk about the pencil. I've got a nice little case from Jackson's. You can get it, but it's optional. So the first drawing tool I wanna to show you is the pencil. Everyone's got them. Just wanna talk a little bit about the different gradations. You've got H, 2H, B, 2B, 6B, HB, well, basically what it means is HB, the higher the number, the softer, and the higher the number on the H side, the harder the pencil. So 6B will be softest, 2B will still be pretty soft, HB is nice in the middle, and H is hard. So let's start with a normal HB pencil. As you can see, mine is a lot sharper than you'd think. And the reason for this is because it sort of penetrates the paper a little bit better. If you've got a stumpy one like this, um, it's, it can be a bit hard to draw. So what I tend to do is I take my knife and I sharpen it by pushing my thumb down on the knife. Of course, the right side of the knife, so always watch out for that. And I sort of remove some of the wood to expose the lead. Okay, so now I've got the lead exposed, but it's still a little bit blunt. So let's get the sharpening pad out. That's just a little bit of sandpaper that I use. You can use any sandpaper, but I've just got a little sharpening pad. You can actually also use a foot file for this or a sharpening block that you can buy at um, the DIY store. To sharpen it, I hold the lead horizontally on the sandpaper and I turn it slowly so all the sides get sharpened. And as you can see, now it's nice and sharp. Now, if you're like me and you're a little bit lazy, you don't want to spend your time sharpening, another really easy solution is to just get one of these mechanical pencils. You can get these at the art store or even at the supermarket. The only thing once at the supermarkets, they only have HP lids. So if you want to be a bit more precise, get them at the uh, art store. As you can see, this one has a bit of a thicker lead. These ones you can only get at the art store and it just depends on what you prefer to use. I myself like a bit of a thinner lead. And you can buy refills for that as well. They go by different gradations. And that wraps it up for the pencil. The next thing I'm going to speak about is blending tools. There's a few different blending tools. You have a brush, stumps, and for instance, tissue. With tissue, what I like to do is wrap it around my finger and then press the charcoal or pencil into the paper like that. With a stump, you can just hold it and again, just use it to press into the paper. And it's nice for blending, but also slightly lightening, flattening. With a brush, you can just very gently brush the charcoal or pencil into the paper. A hog brush is best for this. 
So now a little bit about charcoal. There's different types of charcoal tools you can use. You've got willow charcoal, nitrum charcoal, and white chalk for if you're working on gray paper. And of course, the rubbers. For white chalk, it's really important that it is easily erasable and not waxy. I'll link my favorite one down below. So one good thing about nitrum is, and this is why it makes it so special and also so expensive, is that you can sharpen it like you would a pencil. You can just use a sharpening block, just very gently sharpen it and it can get to a very precise point, which is very good for precise drawing. Willow is a little bit different. It's a little bit cheaper. It's a bit brittle. You can't sharpen it and it's very you can break it very easily which can be a good thing sometimes i like using willow for most of the drawing and then i use nitrum for the precise bits nitrum also goes a little bit darker so that's good if you're really trying to have the full value range all right so lastly we've got the paper there's white paper gray paper brown paper all of it works i'll link my favorite papers down below um, I personally really like working on color paper, but I would say just try some different gradations out. Try more grainy paper versus more smooth paper and see what you like to work on. With brown paper, you can use the white chalk to pull out the lights and the charcoal to darken the darks. Last thing about paper is that if you've got a more grainy paper, it usually keeps the charcoal a little bit more so the charcoal can go darker. If you're using a more smooth paper, like I was using printer paper on the left, you can see that the charcoal doesn't really go that dark, it stays a bit gray. So that does depend on what you want to do with your drawing. You'd say, why don't we always just use grainy paper then? Because then you can go a bit darker. Well, the thing is, you'll have to then flatten your shadows a lot more. You have to work against the grain. So I would say for longer drawing, that is better. But for shorter drawings, always try to go for smoother paper. Okay, that was it. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something that's useful to you. And um, I'll see you next time.